Painting with Menoth John is presented in Super Legitivision. Super Legitivision, the future of podcasting. It's dot com. Hello, I'm Menoth John. And I'd like to welcome you. First of all, let me take just a moment to thank you for allowing me back into your homes. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your miniatures and paint along with us each week. Let's go over to the canvas here and let's get started. I believe, I believe, every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. I believe, I believe. Every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. Let's build a happy little cloud. Let's build some happy little trees. There are no limits here. You start out by believing here. You can almost paint with anything. All you have to do is practice. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Wednesday night, and it must be that the world hasn't ended just yet. Uh, We're waiting for it. We're still braced for impact. We're here on the painting with Menoth, not the Menoth John. That's my name, Menoth John. I can say it. Here on the uh, painting with Menoth John Wednesday night extravaganza. You know me. You love me. We've been at it for a lot of years. I am Menoth John, and of course, you also know, you also love, the man who sits in the catbird seat, the mighty right hand of the podcast, the wind beneath my wings, the co-host with the mo-oh-oh-oh-oh, Mr. John Spencer. hey hey Now, this is about the time of the show when we have to ask the chat room, do we make, do, do we make noise? Are we, are we having the volumes? I hear some volume. So, if, if, if you're happy and you know it, Put something in the con- in the okay. Some that's volume, all yeah. good. Yeah, there you go. All right, folks. Well, welcome to the day after the election. Very special episode here of the painting with Menoth John Anarcho Communist Podcast. Uh, we are here to uh, continue watching as Pennsylvania slowly slips from the hands of uh, of Der Führer. And uh, you know, actually, John, we're. Uh, we're exactly one Nevada away from 270. Indeed, and that would make it exactly 270. So we're uh, we're looking at uh, hopefully that uh, things will continue to go. Our Talcazar, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, you didn't have an election just recently, and I bet you're happy <laughs> about that. Um, but your oh. your elections are probably better. So, you know what, John? You know what we usually do to kick off our show. Oh, it's got to be alcohol. You damn skippy, I... it's got to be alcohol. This is a paint. This is an alcohol show with a painting problem. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, of course, um, it has been documented over the years. My love for the warlock. We know that to be a true thing. Indeed. But but were you, John? Were you aware? Were you aware that the Southern Tier Brewing Company has also got a Southern Tier Distilling Company? I was not aware. Absolutely, we are. This is a, a fantastic thing that is a true thing that is happening. And I hold in my hands, courtesy of one Mr. Rich Brotman, a bottle of pumpkin whiskey. Pumpkin whiskey. It is a, a tips of scales right. at 70 proof, 35% alcohol for those of you playing along at home want to do the conversion. That's metric alcohols, by the way. Proof is metric alcohols. And uh, it uh, is a cl- corn whiskey with natural pumpkin pie flavor, other natural flavors, and caramel color. It's all treat, no trick. That's what it says on the bottle. You can't make it up. Um, and uh, it's it's quite delicious, to be honest. It's a, a very smooth drinking whiskey. It is uh, there's no burn to it at all. And uh, it is uh, I give it. Uh, and we've already lost two or three people watching. Who, who we started at like nine. And I was like, what the hell happened? And now we're down to six. So I'll be honest. Those, that's probably some of my Twitter followers are like, what is this? Oh, this is crazy. Oh God. <laughs> hmm. But I'm here to tell you. It's a fine drinking whiskey. I don't even know where you can get it. I, I know you get it in Buffalo. Anywhere well, else? Get it around here. I'll find it. So it's I mean, delicious. That sounds good. It's delicious, Mr. John. What are you having for the, t- this evening's libations? Well, I mean, I feel like on a momentous day like this, we gotta have something appropriate. I look like force blow. It's a force blow. Ah, yeah, hot damn! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the painting with Menoth John show, honestly, don't care who you voted for. 
Uh, do care that you did exercise your franchise. Uh, there are a lot of people who died uh, making sure that those of us who are here right now have the ability and right to go out and elect the president indirectly through an arcane system known as the Electoral College. <laughs> and uh, so we are here tonight to celebrate those folks. And uh, here's to you, Ron. Hey, Ron. Ron. Mm. It's a pretty, pretty oh. smart taste and drink I got there. I'm gonna tell, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth. All right, tonight, folks, we are back to the 90 minute variety. To be honest with you, 60 minutes, while it was a breakneck 60 minutes, I just didn't feel like I felt like John that we were not giving everyone their value of zero dollars that they spent on this show. Yeah, it felt a little weird, you know. We were just sort of rushing in, you know. It's like, oh crap, let's rush through the media section, and that's that's not our style. That is we not our style. That is not our style. We press we're, and mm -hmm. throw shit at you. No, no, we 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 much like a uh, a new parent. We take each episode and we swaddle it and in clo in robes, and we have we we burn some frankincense and some myrrh. And I think you bur do you burn myrrh, or is it? Frankincense, God! I was burning Frankenstein. And oh, I got crazy anyway. Abby, normal. Anyway, the dead guys, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, folks, that's uh, that's a thing to remember as we approach the holidays. Remember, folks, you burn the frankincense, you rub the myrrh. I think, I think, I think myrrh is, is like an ointment or a or yeah. or a salve, perhaps. I remember that it's chestnuts roasting on open fire and Jack Frost nipping at your nose, not vice versa. That's oh well. I mean, we're not we're not judging, you know. Jack Frost is going to nipple on, nibble on your nuts. <laughs> that got weird real quick. Well, you know. Anyway, so the other thing, John, that I think that we probably need to first off tonight on the Wednesday night extravaganza. Oh, hey, Cap. Um, the uh, we are going to do some assembly. So as you guys know, um, I have been doing uh, the, the Riot Quests and have been enjoying it quite a bit. And uh, Charles beat me last time we, the time before last, he beat me 7 to 1. So he beat me like Ooh. a rug. And then, uh, and then I eked one out against him, I think, recently. Very, very clo close game. But really enjoying it. So I have three more models from the Riot Quest line that uh, we're going to assemble, hopefully... Get as many of them done as we can. Uh, the uh, we've got uh, Melvin and Mayhem, which is this little uh, gobber dude that's riding a, a war jack, and it's for their boss bite boss fight um, series. So you can it's like a, a cooperative version of it, and you're fighting the boss, and uh, looks super fun. Uh, I also I have this? over here I have uh, this thing called a, a mechano shredder. Which is like a, a regular shredder, but it's got it's a clockwork one, so it's got a key in the back. You wind up, super cute. And uh, and then we also have uh, Boss um, McCorn, which is either like a um, what was that faction that he came out with right before I stopped giving giving a shit? The um, Golden okay. Cruci the Cru Golden Crucible. Oh, the Crucible Guard. Crucible Guard. Crucible Guard. I think she might be a Crucible Guard model. Um, or not, I don't know. But it also reminds me of that Man of War that they had where um, they, where it was a babe in a Man of War thing. Mm -hmm. So either way, it's a good-looking model. Going to enjoy putting her together. And uh, there you have it. Uh, but the other thing I, I think I should probably do, John, we talked about this before the show started, is that I should, uh, I should show off uh, where Fiora ended up because I did finish her this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, here she is. And I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. Yeah. Uh, this is the the coal black uh, with the scorn red. Uh, and then there's also on the back side here, you get a little bit of the, the sanguine colors that I kind of uh, picked up from uh, in the latter days of painting my uh, my protectorate. Some of the, the really better looking war jacks that I have are, are in this color scheme. And I, I've got, I became quite fond of it. So I think she just turned out good. Um, yeah, she's. she's uh, I, I'm very happy uh, with everything but her face, and we're not going to dwell on her face because fuck faces. Um, I just don't have the brush control anymore to <laughs> to do that. But did I mention that not brushhead Dave, long time not listener of the show? Yeah, 
Uh, chooses models with no face visible, if at all possible, because he hates painting faces. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, I don't have a problem with faces that are, um, that are like, not human. The problem I, I, I more traditionally have with faces is when they're human ones. And I will tell you, looking at Fiora underneath a, mag, a, a magnifying glass is probably one of the worst experiences I've had in a month. Oh, God. Jesus. I'll tell you, you start looking at models under the magnifier, you're like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. I don't actually know how to paint. Uh, next up on the painting list, however, is this little fellow. This is Bam Fist. He's from Zoo. I'm going to put him up on the painting cam here again, too, just so you can, people get a little bit better look at his at, at his fizz ace. And this is uh, Bam Fist has been uh, Zenithal shaded. So, I mean, I've often talked about Zenithal shading, and I haven't been showing it an awful lot. But if you notice, the... Um, the do- undersides are a lot darker than the tops. And then what I'm going to be ending up doing is... You haven't changed the camera yet. Oh, gosh darn it. You know, you got to press that other button. There you go. Um, the underside here is a lot darker. So you're, it's where the light is catching it and not catching it. And uh, I think then what you do on top of this is you will you can sketch up the, the high points. And you can kind of emphasize them with using like a pure white. And then on the undersides... Where the, the the folds are, you can actually darken those out with a little bit of like a, like a known oil actually works out pretty pretty well, and that way when you uh, go to do like his skin, you can get away with just a thin coat of a flesh color, and it'll just pre everything will appreciate automatically. It's really fun. One thin coat, huh? One, <laughs> one maybe maybe two. Um, but hey, anyway, so let's go ahead and let me put. I've already on the, uh, the that cam, so. Uh, folks, kind of let's talk a little bit about assembly. We haven't talked about assembly on the show for quite some time, John. Indeed. Uh, Hell, my most recent models don't even require assembly. So I, I have to tell you how heartbroken I was when I saw that this was an all-pewter model. Yeah. Hey, Ron Lore. Thanks for being on here. Um, the uh, the, the pewter is, is hard. Was that? Yeah. Was it the early 2000s, an all-pewter model? Uh, Raya quests tend to be pewter. Um, the uh, aside from like Leadfoot and Treads, and the uh, and then all the treasure chest models that I've been painting over the time, those mm-hmm. are those are red. Those are resin, and they're they're decent resin. They're they're good. I mean, this is a pretty sharp looking model right here. Oh yeah, that looks good. And the uh, first detail looks like yeah. Yeah, it's and then there's this and. Uh, so, I mean, the first step that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take my, my little brass brush here, and I'm going to give it the business. And by giving it the business, what I'm actually trying to do here is knock off some of this mold release that might be in there. Yeah, this is actually, if you don't like washing metal models, a lot of people don't, the brass brush will clean up some of those egregious uh, lines if you go hard enough on it. You know, some ones are like not quite worth a file, but slightly annoying. Yep. And it'll also get a lot of that mold release off there. And now i got to take my glasses off. And, whoops. I just, oops, I just bumped. I just bumped Chewy. Sorry, Doug. And then, then what I'm going to start doing here is I'm going to start looking at where are the mold lines on this thing. And that's that's the hard part is where's the mold lines because there's always mold lines. Yep. And we're going to get... The second you think there isn't a mold line, that just means you missed it. Yeah. I mean, and it's so... The way these models are made is it's a two-part mold, always, the top and the bottom. So there's always going to be a mold line. Some companies are really good at hiding it, and you can, you know, those are the best. And other companies are privateer press. Okay, well, try not to go there. So here you go, John. There's uh, brand new stuff I just got. Here is one. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm going to, what the fuck am I doing? I act like I don't have the technology, right? You got the technology, and furthermore, it's our friend. Uh, it is our friend. So I get to... Just jump through a couple things. I don't have it quite as set up as you do to uh, immediately go to my other webcam. Well, it's because you're not streaming it, man. It's the only reason I have it. So there we go. Let's uh, save that. I'll go to my painting cam, too. Boom. Hopefully. Yeah. You can there see. we go. Yep. So there you go. There's a Warhammer from the newest uh, Catalyst Games Battletech uh, Kickstarter. Nice. It's, uh, I mean, these models are really good. I was very impressed. Let me grab one of the bigger ones. What this kind of plastic biggest... is that? Uh, it's standard. It feels like standard plastic. It's a little, 
it's not quite super brittle. It's a little bit more bendy than uh, maybe GW normal plastic, but it feels otherwise like normal plastic. Hmm. Don't find out because yeah. there's no 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 gluing. These are all fully assembled. Um, since they're plastic, it's easy conversions. If you had some arms to put on, you could drop, pop these arms off and put other arms on. Like, heck, you want two of the, I guess these are PPCs, you could probably cut this arm off at a point here, cut this arm at a point here, and just put, put it on. You know what the worst part about this is, John? Is that um, the best way to, to do this is over on the wall, and that's my Dremel. Oh, yeah, the Dremel. God, if you if you get a light hand, light touch with it, it can be great. Yeah, here we go. Here's my favorites. These are the Battle Armor Elementals. Oh, wow. Wow. They're tiny, but, man, they look pretty good. That's really good. Someone's like, well, they don't have those details, the old ones. Like, well, the old ones were fucking huge. These are actually relatively appropriately sized. Let me grab a... Hold on. I can grab an appropriate mic. I can get my hands on it. You know, this is this this is enough. These mold lines are enough to make me want to stop and just paint tonight instead of assemble. <laughs> so, I grabbed the Phoenix Hawk because the Phoenix Hawk is on the first cover of a book with elementals and they're it's pretty close they're still a little bigger than maybe they should be but they're pretty close and i'm very pleased with, this, with these models out of this kickstarter super cool um very well done you get a fair amount of them for not a ton of money and everyone gets an urban mech because everyone needs an urban mech heck yeah it is the giant trash can and it is my mech warrior online unit spirit animal and super cool Sweet. There you go. But uh, those are my new. I want to. I need to finish my. Uh, I've been painting up on these guys a bit. They're not done by any stretch. That looks really good. But yeah, they're coming along. It's just so hard because you, when you use gray as a main color, mm -hmm. you lose a lot of yeah. easy, easy stuff you can do. But some touch ups and all, I think they're coming along. Actually, looking at them without the super harsh light and without my magnifier on, they actually are looking a lot better tabletop than I was giving credit for. <laughs> so. Like I'll I said, do don't ever look at Fiora's face. Yeah. So this is sort of my paint, uh, my, my camo scheme. So the gray, which is a little darker on this guy, um, is going to have the red and the turquoise as the uh, the camo pattern because it's fun. Oh, that's really nice, John. Yeah. I, I kind of like it. It looks very alien worldy. So, uh, But I found in painting all those, John, that uh, I don't like painting units nearly as much Ooh. as I used to. That's the beauty of Riot Quest right there. I mean, because I was thinking, I'm like, Riot Quest, like, that's cool. And I was thinking, uh, I mean, Marvel Crisis Protocol, what I painted prior to this. And, man, let me tell you, I do love just painting a one-off model. Especially if it's super easy, like, if it's something you got a paint scheme ready for. And you just, like, just go. Yeah, I mean, that's that was the beauty of doing uh, doing the treasure chests. They had really good detail, and... Literally, if you had an idea of what you wanted it to be, they just the paint brush fell over and it was done. Yeah, Ron Laura, I agree. Units drain my soul, but I'm going to try and do them in groups. So I'm going to do a unit, do a Rebel Trooper unit, um, or another troop, maybe the Rebel Fleet Troopers. Then I'm going to do a character or vehicle and one of the special units, and then I'll go back and do another Rebel Trooper unit or whatever. I can rotate through like that and not have it hurt my soul. Uh, I might get all the Rebel Troopers out of the way early just so I have. Because I have this squad paint scheme done. They might end up being just placeholders. I'm thinking of changing the basing. Um, I don't dislike the basing, but I feel like I could do something cooler. Not just like cooler, something different that would come together better, let's say. Yep. So we'll see about that. But they're still in progress and working on them. Working on some terrain. Lots of good stuff there. And, you know, learning a lot of stuff in the process. Need better brushes. Brushes, friends. Brushes. I am a huge fan still to this day of the Broken Toad. Yeah, I need to get some. I just... So many other things coming up. Oh, Life. my God. The, the mold lines. I know. It's... The, but I don't even know the last time. When's the last time I put together a metal model? Let me think. I mean, I'm half tempted to just run over, unplug my Dremel, and figure out... Oh, I could plug it in over there. All right, Vamp. Be right back. All right, well, I mean, so I got the latest uh, Kickstarter from uh, Catalyst Games for Battletech. It is super cool. It is literally, it's it's not necessarily a starter box, but it is sort of a starter box. It's the Clan Invasion. comes with a whole star of Clan X. That would be five for those of you at home. And two points of elementals. Uh, you know, points of a star. So, you know, it's two bases worth. 
Uh, it's super cool. It is basically a starter game. I don't want to be in stores, but for five mechs and those two elementals, when you're looking at a retail price of 50 bucks, that is really, really good. Like, they know how to get people in. It is that, and you've got the Game of Armor Combat that's also 50 bucks and has, I believe, two lances. That would be eight mechs for those of you at home in that as well. So um, it's out there. They're making a big push. I'm looking forward to playing some of that. The uh, Rumi, uh, Banyan, has some battle deck as well. We might be playing some uh, there. Um, it's funny how things come full circle. I think it was one of those early games I got into. I got out of it for a while and then came back um, and uh, enjoying the crap out of it. Throughout how much they missed it, you know. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm sort of uh, reliving the childhood a little bit here, John. <laughs> so how 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 uh, irritating is that sound? I mean, I can barely hear it. Seems fine to me. Okay. Let's see what the uh, the chat says. Let us know if that sounds annoying. Okay. Yeah, they said it's not bad. So there you go. All right. Well, there that's also good that. to show people how to do that because I need to get. I have a wire brush, but I think it's a little worn. I think I need to get a new one. The um, if you're going to do this, the the brush you want is the stainless steel brush. The stainless steel, okay. Yep, it's a, it's a little bit stiffer. It's got a little bit more um, duration to it. It'll, it does a much better job at actually taking the the mold lines off. The uh, if you want to just polish something, the the carbon steel one is is really nice at just like polishing. But mm -hmm. that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to actually remove metal. Note that also with this, if you've got those joints where you're going to need to connect them, mm -hmm. you can hit the area there with that, and it's going to do the same thing that using a file would do. It's going to score it a bit. Yep. It's going to get some... It'll look to the naked eye like it's nice and shiny and perfect, but it's really not. Nope. It's a big scarred mess. Now, the other thing is you can't... It's not a cure-all. There's like... You see, I don't know if, it's hard, if you can see it, but on, on here there's a there's a ridge, and i gotta I got to get that excess metal off of there. Yeah, it's I mean, not it's not a cure if, uh, for everything. Proper, but. Uh, proper mold line removal is a multi-tool job. Yeah, you need the seam scraper rather than a knife in most cases. Though in some cases a knife will be plenty good because there are some bits that are just so big you just got to cut them off. But try and cut them off carefully. Don't take a chunk out of the model and use the seam scraper to get the rest or a file to get down or your handy dandy Dremel should you have one. By the way, um, pro tip: be careful for small parts because it will they will fly across the room and you will never find them this would be why um back when i had some signar i had a um a striker model that had a boiler from the um high reclaimer it wasn't just because it looked cool uh no it was because striker's boiler got sold with the house and that my parents had because I have no idea where it was. Well, I'll be honest. Somewhere in the old house that I, I lived at last, there is a hammer from an alternative tailor model from Malifaux. I don't know where that thing was. I swept. I cleaned up afterwards. I could never find that thing again. It was gone. G-A-W-N, gone. Oh, my God. I'm so glad I went and got this. Yeah. Makes things so much easier. The other thing about these, John, I was really impressed, and by first look, and I haven't done Magnifier yet, these models don't have, like, much anything from mold lines at all. Nice. Uh, really pleased. Because there are other ones, I mean, I've got one of the other ones, two of the other ones over here painted, and they were solid models. Like, these are fine. These are, like, next level on top of that, which is impressive. That's great. I just keep being impressed and, you know, pleased with what the companies are doing. You know, models are getting so good. Also, I got... And, John, you... In, a, in a, talking about not units to paint, I got that whole box of dungeons and doggies over there. I got. Oh, yeah. I got the cats. I'm supposed to paint some year. Yeah, um, was it uh, someone I follow on Twitter? M was uh, was painting those. They just look so good. They're so such characterful models. Oh, they're so tiny. Plus, I uh, may or may not have bought their neck, the other Kickstarter they had with the uh, the adventure and all in it. Oh yeah, cool mini campaign. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm going to find it because uh, was it uh, Secret of Gullet Cove or something like that? Um, because I just thought that was really cool and I might be able to <laughs> pre-COVID. I'm like, I can totally convince my friends to play this. Maybe I will be able to. You may it's be the Animal Adventures Secret of Gullet Cove. Nice. And 
just so many more of those really awesome characterful models and like a source book. I mean, how can you really go wrong? Exactly. I mean, there's a there's a pirate pug named Roger. Is he jolly? Uh, I imagine he is jolly. He looks jolly. He's got his tongue out and everything. Egg boy, oh, yeah. And it comes with both cats and dogs. Cool. And then monsters and stuff. It's, it looks like it's going to be really cool. I don't remember what level I can remember what level I got. I'm going to get 21 miniatures along with the hardcover book, the PDF, the maps, tokens, and all the stretch goals. That's really awesome. That is cool. And that company is just doing really good stuff. I know um, this Guild Ball. Steamforged? Steamforged is doing the models for them, which is fine for a game like this. This is exactly what it is. Um, and it's just really cool and characterful stuff. And I can tell you, John, I, much as I like playing something like Star Wars Legion, I really dig painting the individual models so much more. You oh, get yeah. so much more, and there's so much more satisfaction. You're like, bam, I'm done. And maybe I'll feel that way when I get, you know, an entire army I've made of these guys done. But I mean, these guys are like, I got a guy done. Yay. Oh, seven more in the unit. Six more in the unit. There you go, six more in the unit. I mean, it's not bad. It's not like painting like fucking 40k army or even a war machine army anymore. But uh, yeah, the, I yeah, uh, I my desires never... for models have changed a lot. Yeah, I mean, I can't do big units ever again. Yeah, pro those days are are probably over for me. Uh, oh, so uh, Ron Lord wants to know how are you enjoying Among Us? It's fun. We um. We played uh, on uh, Sunday night with just uh, Rich and Emily, uh, my, my girlfriend, uh, Belinda Librarian, um, Dan, Dan Vandercoy, and then my two boys. And it's fun. It's, uh, you know, I, it, it's, uh, it is definitely a great way to stay socially engaged with your friends. I don't know I, that I'd I've ever play in like a normal. Good, fun. But, yeah, I went to, with random people. With randos? No. That like, just sounds like enough, Toxic the Clown. I, I play enough MechWarrior online with randos, and I don't mind them. There's a lot of good people there, and honestly, I'm starting to get to the point, we're starting to get to the point, and a reputation of our unit, John, that people listen to us. Yeah. We say, hey, let's do this. They're like, well, those Irby guys know what they're talking about. Let's go do that. But we have some good fun. Um, there's, uh, God, I had some good games this week, John. Go ahead. Lay mommy, man. I'm just sitting here making drilling noises here. Well, we dropped, uh, I, Monday I was just chilling out, you know, we had a full unit, uh, uh, full lance dropping, that's four, it's most you can have at once, anyone else has to try and randomly make it into the, into the game, which is difficult. So I'm sitting there playing around, and they're like, uh, one of the guys leaves, is like, alright, well, he's going to dinner, I'll, I'll jump in for a couple games, I got that time. We jump in, we end up on what's Polar Highlands, which is the uh, snow map, which, as you'll imagine, doesn't have a ton of terrain. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's sort of rolling hills type of thing, so there's sure. some trenches, and there, you, you can get some hidey places, but it's not, like, easy. If you're stuck up on top of a hill, you, you better pray. Yep. We're all in urban mechs, which are normally super slow, but as soon as you modify them, you know, you can get pretty good speed out of them. So we all run around the board. We're going as a lance together. Uh, one of the light mechs is fast and keep it up with us more or less. He's doing his own scouting duty. And, you know, we go and we ambush one of their light mechs and murder it, which is what we do. Then we start chasing some other dudes, and then, you know, before we actually get engaged, we're chasing that guy, and he's sort of leading us back to their team, to his team. And our team's going down, I think at that point it was like one to four or something like that, so we're losing by three. Okay. But then we, you know, we, we let the the other mech lead us back into their their team, and we just descend upon them like, like the Fist of Vengeance. Nice. And I'm just like, oh, look, there's one of their long-range mechs. I'm just like, psh, psh, just just shooting and shooting, pushing dudes. It's great. We're all over the place. You know, our team comes in, does a decent job. We catch up, and we end up winning that one. I want to say 12 to 9. No, 12 to 7 or 8. Wow. It was a good – actually, I can tell you exactly. It's almost like I saved my good games because I need to remember it is the Street Cleaner. That's the, 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 the version of the Arbor Mac I play. It's called the Street Cleaner. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. 
next photo. We were uh, we actually won uh, twelve to nine. Two of our lands were were live, and one person from another from another lands was alive. Not that he he didn't do a ton. Um, I did top. I did almost did top damage in the game. One of the enemy did a little more damage, but I did eight hundred damage, which is crazy because I'm in a small mech. I'm in a thirty ton mech. Sure. Wow. The game was hundred and just crush some fools. It was great fun. Teamwork. We got a lot of confidence from our team of how good we worked together and how well we pushed and did what we needed to do. That's always a good feeling. It's, yeah, absolutely. You get the team together, the whole crew, because we're all in comms together. We're helping out. And of most uh, impressiveness is our tier one player, because I'm only tier four. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes from one to five, I'm tier four. Uh, our tier one player is like, I need that build. He need to know how you did that. So I'm like, here you go. Go to town. So, super fun. Um, we ran out of machine gun ammo, which is, I wouldn't say it's a hard feat, but it's a fairly impressive feat. It doesn't normally happen. <laughs> um, but super fun and the next game we were playing on uh, it's like a interstellar message transmission terminal so it's this big sort of pyramid with a radar dish on top Yep. there's plenty of high stuff but there's a basement to it so we get there and we're like our boss Remus is like basement, everyone go to the basement so most of the team listens to us I stay out a little bit, take a little damage give, give him covering fire for one of our slower guys who's trying to make it we go to the basement, and we get down a little bit because not everyone listens. It's rare that everyone listens to a basement call. Even when we tell them, like, look, go to the basement, we'll have candy bars for them. We got candy bars in the basement. <laughs> and, but slowly, they just started coming in little by little, and we would just chew them up and spit them out. It was super fun. More compliments at the end. We just crushed them fools. Um, I mean, they, they made a good solid couple pushes, but they weren't coordinated enough and we just kept just kicking them out and you know taking down their max it was great fun like i said more compliments on how we played i only did 660 that game i'm sorry i was slipping <laughs> which i'll point out is more than my previous best before the 800 game like by by, by a small amount um but man it was super fun to get that and have those fun games and just have good teamwork i mean I know Mechware Online is an old game. It's not getting a lot of updates. I mean, they're trying to update it now. They got a new community manager who they renewed their license for five years. Like, let's make this work. But it is good to find some like-minded individuals and just play and have fun. Yep. I really that guys, that, that's the key to having a good game group. Yeah. And it's just a good time with them. Those guys, those, they're my kind of peeps. We're not too serious with the game, but we're serious about teamwork and doing stuff together and making sure we're, you know, trying to be a, an advantage to the team. We want to be, you know, doing good stuff, not stinking up the joint. It happens sometimes. We have oh, yeah. many, I mean, many, there's a it, tunnel you know, push on certain maps that end poorly. Yeah, and you know, when when uh, Rich and Dan and I are playing cross out and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, some, in the same build, you'll have one game that everything will just happen and everything will be sweet, and then the next time you get riggedy wrecked. I, I, absolutely, and you can't let that discourage you. Nah. Like I, I I'll be honest. My September as a month uh, in Mechware Line was terrible. I don't know what was going on. I mean, there's always a drop off. You know, there's a, there's a skill thing that you'll see. It's why you get someone new at work. They come in, they're learning stuff, they're learning stuff. You think they know what they're doing, and then like they just stink up the joint for a month. You're like, the fuck is going on? And then they get better again. Hopefully. Yep. Usually. But that, that's just a constant thing. But man, I stunk up the joint. I felt terrible. There were some days I was just like, I'd mute my mic and just be like, Gah! I don't want them hearing that. They don't need to hear that. You know, I drop with them and try to do my best, just trying to be part of the team. But I was getting wrecked game after game. But you know, you push through it, and they helped a lot because I mean, honestly, it feels good when they they want you to play. When you got two lances forming, and one of the guys who's one of your better players leaves the lance he was in to jump in your lance, that, that feels good. You know, you feel valued and all. So, Holy shit! There's my. I think we're line talk. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm probably just about finished with this clown. Excellent. Perfect amount of vamping, huh? Yeah, it's great. 
Oh, there's Hail Boop. Adequately. Hey, Hail Boop. How's it going, man? Hey, Hail Boop. All right, so... Let's split the eyes. you got to put on your glasses before you read the screen, John. Time to put the glasses back on. Squinting at them. Yeah. All right, so next up. I don't believe in pinning. We've talked about this on the show. This is a known now, thing about me. With all due respect to Mouth John, I understand you does not believe in pinning, but pinning is real, it exists, and it is a good skill to learn. If you I, have a Dremel, your pinning will become ten times easier. Yeah. I don't asterisk. have... The asterisk is as long as you can get the holes to match up well. Yeah, and that's Or know how to make them match up okay. So I actually suggest some practice in that. That little uh, the, uh, seam scraper which he has there also has a very, very good point on that, which is why we call it the hobby shank. It is a um, wonderful shank. And, uh, yeah, diamond shape. That one's not, not going to close easily. Anyways, um, uh, you can use that to set the point where you're going to drill it. You stick it in like a punch, set the point you're going to drill, and then just drill on that point, and then you can drill a point on the other side. As long as you, your eyes can make that work, you'll have a good pin. But what he's doing is a little less intensive. It's a little easier to do overall. Yep, so what I'm going to do in here is I'm just mixing up a little batch of, of green stuff. And this is method is known as glue, green stuff, glue. And the, the order in which you assemble a model using this technique is a, is a little, it's a, you, you got to think it through. Mm -hmm. Because the arms are the problem. And because they're heavy and they usually hang out from the side of the, of the mech, they're going to want to tear themselves off. Now, this particular model's arms have some pretty deep sockets on them. So I'm anticipating success. I got to look at the box. What do I do with the box? Here it is. Now, I'll be honest. For all their faults, I think uh, Prep to Press makes a pretty solid, uh, you know, pewter model. They know what they're doing. They're... They usually have pretty good sockets for stuff. It's not like some of these other craps where you're just like, how is this supposed to stay? So I'm looking at the box, and the the ball here is on the right-hand side, is on its left hand arm, and the puncher is, this is over here. It's like that. So that's what it's going to look like. So it's not, it's not too, oops, that's what it's going to look like. It's not too bad. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're using this, doing this method, the object of the green stuff is not necessarily to create the greatest, you know, it bond. it's going to make a good bond. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to go super go crazy, go nuts on how much you use. Because in socket sockets like that, you can have a tendency to um, fill up the gap so much that it makes for a weird-looking bond. So Indeed. first thing we're going to do is we are going to put the feet on the base. So I've got his foot here, and I basically, in this type of privateer press base, when they give you a little nodule like this, a little, a little nut, uh, nublet on it, the idea is that you're going to put it in one of these holes on the back. Okay. So what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to, I kind of want him standing like this, I guess, kind of like this. And so I'm going to put it on this one, and then what I did is I took my, um, my pin vise, <laughs> And that I don't use for pinning, but I did put it in the hole, drill the hole out, and then use the hobby shank to make the hole nice and round. So now when I, I was do it, say that's actually a really good use of the hobby shank. And I, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a little bit of green stuff on this foot, just a tiny little bit. Oh, and you see, I just saw, I just spotted on an error. There's a there's a chunk of pewter that needs to be clipped off of here first. There you go. So, yeah. Rumble, you mentioned those some of those sockets where they have a, a two flat connections. Mm -hmm. That is that has got to be pinned. Either you you use a super glue, you take your chances, or it's got to be pinned. Unfortunately, because some 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 of their connections just are like that. The glue might work. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna work. Which which, probably which one are you talking about? He said there's somewhere they just ship and it's like a hand and a wrist and they're both got flat there. Yeah, that's that is. Stretching the capabilities of glue, green stuff, glue. Yeah, if it's if it's enough surface area, the glue might just work by itself. That's the biggest thing. Is glue, green stuff, glue helps with weird surface areas sometimes. It also makes it more of a flat. 
connection because sometimes it's not. Like a lot of their old models, it'd be wavy and, and like you test it with the glue, you pull it apart and you realize the glue's not touching all the other part. And you're like, ah, I see what the problem is. Okay. So that's on there now. And so now I'm just going to lay this on here to see how, the, how this is going to fit on. And let me see here. That's going to fit like that. So it's it's going to be pretty much how I intended it to be. Yeah. And Honestly, test fitting like John is here is important with these models too because you need to know how it's going to go together. Otherwise, you get halfway done, you're like, oh, this looks terrible because I put him too far forward or too far back or what have you. Yep, and that's exactly what will happen too. It, it, so now what I'm going to do is I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, first off, I'm going to try and get this damn plastic to lay flat. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the, the socket where it's going to come together. And then I'm going to dip it, just touch it real briefly on there. And, of course, I fucked up and missed. There we go. And now I'm going to play, oh, yep, I got lucky. I thought I was going to play 15 rounds. Oh, boy, I got... Glue, glue control has left the building. <laughs> all right, so, so always keep something to wipe glue up with. You don't want excess glue. Have a one of those little spongy things from inside your blister pack, or a paper towel. Fold it multiple times because it's going to go through. That way you can dab off the extra glue. And Support. now, of course, I have now successfully glued my hand to the model because that's what you do. All right, so. Yep. I actually may not have made the green stuff quite big enough on this one, believe it or not. All right, so because I was so good with that super glue, it's a mess now. And I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to go too much further on this because of how what a mess I've made. All right, so let's get this over here. I guess I can well, continue to forge forward. Yeah. So that's a good note also. So if you guys make a mess of your super glue and it dries, this is why I have acetone mm -hmm. and Q-tips. A little liberal application of acetone with a Q-tip. Don't just pour that shit on, trust me. Yeah, I got you. On there, to do you, can, you, can, you can soften up that super glue that's dried. You can peel it off. You can you can get it off with your knife or your, your seam scraper and fix up a lot of problems with that. Or if maybe you need to get it it's bound. You need to get it unbound because it just it's just not sitting right or what have you, and it's resisting every urge. Because if, in God's name, you accidentally glue something together wrong, that will be the tightest glue fit in the history of mankind. Yeah, that's just Murphy's law. So the acetone will do it. I've had stuff where I had to get it literally. I'm like taking a hobby knife, dipping it in the acetone, and getting it in between the steam so I can get it apart. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, they usually are, honestly, and honestly. Once it dries, if you've got a little bit of a gap, that's what the rest of the buddy's good for. You fill the gap, you clean it up a little bit, Bob's your uncle. Actually, you know what, John? I'm unhappy with this. Oh, well, take it apart. I'm unhappy. We're gonna, Don't be unhappy. We're going to pop another little bit of green stuff in the top here. And so we're just going to drop it. The way it John does it is, is, it is good, but I actually like to, if I'm using green stuff, I like to test the green stuff. I'll put a big bunk on I'll smush it, make sure it looks like it's working right, then pull it off, and then put the glue on. That's a that's a really good top idea. But that sometimes makes it a little weaker because the glue is not necessarily on both sides. If it seeps in well, it's good. But the thing is, when it finally, if it does come apart, you have a good solid bond. You just need to put another application of glue and glue that shit back together. Yeah, this is this is gonna be okay. Now, what I'm noticing here on this is that there's a little bit of a gap there, and that's okay. That's why. It's not bad. That's why, where is it? Where's where's the magic? Plastic putty from Vallejo. This is your oh. best friend in the whole universe. Okay, yeah, well, plastic putty, sure. If you're gonna, you're gonna cheat. Well, I mean, yes, I will <laughs> always cheat because if you're not cheating, you're not winning. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Brave, uh, a wise man said that. May you rest in peace, Kate Pepe. Run. Okay. So, next up is this arm. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this arm on because I can hold onto the model like this and I can push real hard like this. So I've got opposing forces. Okay. Well, then what I'm going to do is after that, put that arm, then I can use this arm that's already on uh, to brace it. So we're going to do this again. As the master of 30 minutes putting stuff together and leaving it, 
Uh, John's going further than I would in a night. You just have to be careful when you do that. It's fine. You just have to be extra careful. What I would have done is I would have done that and something else, left that, and then the next night come back into the norm, does something else, and the next night do it. But that's oh, yeah. the hobby streak in me speaking. Yeah, that's, I mean, but they call me Mr. Vegas, you know. All right, so we got, I got, almost, I almost messed up and didn't put the extra glue on it. They call oh. me Tater Salad. Oh, I see that reference. All right, so. You've done it. You caught the tater. All right. And we just gave it a whole bunch of pressure. Yep. And. and be careful where you're putting the pressure. You see, he's not, no pressure on the other parts that he has glued. It's all on the top there. Yep. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, the force that I'm applying is directly opposite. So I'm not putting any force on something I already glued. Mm -hmm. I'm only pushing through the metal. And no. theoretically, you could put the other arm at the same time. I wouldn't generally, because you can have the two arms. You can get on either side, but it's a little it's a little sketchy sometimes. Oh yeah, this is this is the hard this is the S level one oh, that yeah. I'm about to do. You get tempt fate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No 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 no. We got we ain't got time for that. Oh yeah, that's fair. All right, so we're gonna flatten this one out a little bit. Because remember, like if you if you screw it up, it's it's not a problem. Take a breath. It's okay. You can fix it. Yep. I know when other people oh, get frustrated, like, don't, don't get frustrated. That's you can much. fix it. It's like the yeah, damn... Hobby you can get this shit done. The damn cool green stuff was 30, 40% the size of the arm. Jesus. All right, so let's... <laughs> boop. All right, now we're going to put a little bit of that on here. Come on, just a, just a touch of fudge. All right, here we go. And then we're going to fit that in the socket. That's a good socket too. So, oh, it's so, yeah. this is being attempted because that socket is beefy. All right, so now I'm pressing on the on the arm and on the other arm, pushing them together. Now, now yeah. John used the glue, green stuff glue, but I feel like that model, those arms, you probably could have gotten away without it. Yeah, they got to, they got some pretty beefy um, sockets on them. All right, so there you have that. There's a little bit of a gap on this arm over here. But remember, these are mechanical parts. I think I'll probably will fill this gap a little bit. Because these models are so characterful and so cute. I want to make sure they look awesome. Okay, the rest of this model is going to go together in a god darn heartbeat. Okay, this one is a... This kind of a joint is long and skinny. Okay, so we're going to make a long and skinny green stuff. Okay, call that a sausage where I come from. There you go, long and skinny. All right, there you go, and boom, on there. Put a little bit of uh, residual on here, just a touch of fudge. All right, now, this one has to go in like this, I think. I think, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to pick it up and put it in like this. Okay. And then, there. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing in this one. Where will he stop, John? I don't know. It'll be soon, though. Yeah, pretty soon the models together. I would say within the next 12 minutes or so. It probably will be. Because then we go to the media section. And tonight we've got a very special media section. We're saluting, of course, <laughs> Sean Connery, passing of a legend. And uh, we're going to talk. I, I watched a Sean Connery movie. John, at John's suggestion, we uh, decided to watch Sean Connery movies this week. And we have two movies I, to talk about. I don't even know what you watched, John. I watched two. I will cover one in detail and one more uh, circumspectly. Trying to keep it, uh, you know, we'll leave in between the multiple media sections I have to deal with in a week. Fair enough. Fair enough. I did, I did not really watch any. Okay, I did not watch any Clone Wars this past it's okay. two weeks. I know because, you're having so much fun with it. Uh, you know, it's funny. The closer it gets to really good, the more terrible it is until it actually hits really good. Because you see potential. And you're like, motherfuckers. Shit the middle. Do I have it. to land the hand on this thing? Uh-oh. So you got to... This is the hand. Okay, this little thing here has got a hand on it. That is supposed to be on this guy's wrist. 
Holy shiznat. Yeah, they uh, they really want you to get a model. Uh, you're going to earn it that time, John. Honest to Pete. Really? So, it's got to be like this? No. No, 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 no. So it's like this, and his hand is... Okay, well, all right. So this is going to suck. I'm going to... Does he have, like, reins in his hand or something? He's got a gear shift in his hand. Oh. Oof. I love it and hate it when they do that stuff. Yeah, I'll tell you, there's, it's still not as bad as landing two... Two are our, our hands on the same weapon. Fuck. That noise. Yeah, any, any sort of multiple point joint is a pain in the butt. I mean, it gets easier as you get plastic models because, I mean, spoiler, you know, plastic bends a little better than metal. Though, if it's a long enough thing, you can get the metal into the bend, but it is often a pain. Okay, now, allegedly, this is supposed to fit in here, likely like this, and then maybe I bend the the arm down at some point. Oh, boy. Okay, so this isn't actually, this little gear shifty thing is not going to get glue, green stuff. It doesn't really need it. It's never going to get any kind of thrust on it. So I'm pretty sure I can just land it, in, and it'll work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this solidify. And then when it's solidified, I can brace the I can I can brace the bottom of it with my hand and I can use a pliers or something to get the hand to actually line up with the gear shift by bending mm -hmm. the soft metal. Yep. Holy smokes. Okay, and now all I need to do is quick pop a little tiny piece of green stuff onto the head and shove the head in the hole. And I'll be done. Yeah, those joints are never fun with the gear shift at all. I still have nightmares from old metal models that had those, and I was like, fuck you. Oh, everybody's got their tail about about Niss Hunters. Everybody who's ever played Niss Hunters. Oh, Niss Hunters. Son, Niss Hunters ain't anything compared to Necron Immortals in metal. Those motherfuckers. I bet that was bad times. Yeah, the skinny arms. Like, I hate you so much. I ain't paying. Who's buying these for me? I ain't playing these guys anymore. <laughs> there you have it. The old days when you work at Games Workshop and selling an army is actually a, <laughs> actually a profit. <laughs> well, kids, there you have it. That is Melvin and Mayhem from the Riot Quest line. It's really a fit. The models in the Riot Quest line are just so much fun. Yeah, they're super, they seem super cool. The other, the other models will... Boss McCarn is is a torso and two arms, and um, the Mechano Shredder is three pieces also, and we'll we'll worry about that another day. Today is not that day, but it's good to have the. I'll, I'm going to leave the the Dremel over here for a couple days or a day when I, maybe tomorrow I can finish it off and I'll just get the old Dremel out and polish it, polish up those things and just knock them out in no time. But. I do like the, the Riot Quest folks. If you haven't tried Riot, Riot Quest um, and you have someone you can play miniatures with, I, I love the game. I think it's really fun. I think it's, I poo pooed it a lot when it came out because it was like, oh, you're effing kidding me. I was one of those privateer pressers. And uh, it's, I was wrong. It's just, it's just fun. And, I mean, uh, it's it's a good lesson for us, even even in our even in our experience, that you can poo poo a game, but until you really play it, you don't know. It's so much better than than the the slog that is War Machine. Yeah, it. I can sit down. It's and funny. It. My thought about large armies is, if I play a large army, I want a large army, and I want a ba more balanced thing. It's you know. I don't feel. I feel like when it came out, War Machine had its place because it was so many less models. It just grown to be more models, mm -hmm. and now it's enough models. We're like, I might as well just fucking play 40k. 
Yeah, I hear you. I mean, granted, I'm not going to play a lot of models of 40k because I have knights. Because, I mean, that's what I want to play. Knights. Knights are cool. Giant stoppy robots. Knights are cool. Oh, yeah, and board games, small model, model board games are good. I mean, Warhammer Underworld, uh, Night Vault, Shadespire. Um, what is the other game? Hold on. Judgment? Mm-hmm. Judgment looks good. We talked to um, the guys working on that. And that seems really cool. The roommates are excited about that. I mean, and you don't feel like you're getting that much. Like, oh, I get like seven models or something stupid like that, and I've got enough to play. Like, seven models sounds like just a fun diverting some painting stuff. Much less you get a game out of it. Same with, like, Night Vault. Oh, here's a box set you got between three and seven models or so. That's just a fun diverting paint. You get yeah. to play a game with it, too? Sounds good. Yeah, to Ron Lord, Riot Quest is a board game, which is why it works. It just happens to have models that need to be painted. You're right. You're absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I cannot argue with any of the words that you used in that sentence. Um, so, hey, let's get on over to the media section. Media section! Woo! Um, and uh, the lead for, by the way, the lead for Trump continues to shrink in Pennsylvania, but I think that they are probably phoning it in for the night, it looks like, perhaps. They've yeah, got I days. don't think they've gone for much longer. They, there's the, see, this is the thing that teaches us that we don't need the electoral college. We don't need these quick things. We could just have it be popular vote and be done. Yeah. Right now, um, Trump's lead in Pennsylvania has now shrunken to 193,000. Um, at 4.30 this afternoon, it was 300,000 in the lead. His uh, lead in, in uh, Georgia has shrunk to 40,000. Yeah. So, and, and, but Georgia's at 98% reporting. Uh, Pennsylvania's only at, at 88% and hasn't moved off of 88% in probably two hours. So, yeah, I don't think, I mean, they, they shouldn't. They don't kill okay yourself. They'll be there. Don't kill yourself counting. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Um, there's That's your election update. resolution. We'd rather have it correct. And to and, and to what Biden said, let's make sure every vote gets counted. Let's have Absolutely. it be about democracy and not about partisan, who wins. It's not about winning. It's about democracy. Yep. And remember, if, you, if, if any side ever says they don't want all the voice, votes to be counted, those are the bad guys. Yep. All and right. Always tell. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we lost a, we lost a movie star this yes. week. Uh, no a, true, way to say it. a true movie star. Uh, Sean Connery uh, was uh, the the first of the James Bonds. Uh, originally, um, you know they they weren't sure about him as an actor, but it was his uh, his what they call it his dangerous good looks is what netted him the role, and uh, went on to uh, portray a number of suave. Uh, just, just a lot of gravitas on the sc- on uh, gravitas on the sc- on the screen, and uh, obviously, like we said, it's the first James Bond. Uh, John, do you want to lead off? And uh, what movie did you watch? Uh, well, I watched two. Okay. Uh, one I'm going to touch on briefly is Outland. Oh, that's that's a uh, I sh- oh I'd forgotten about that. Uh, if anyone cares, it's on Stars for free if you have stars or if you want to get a seven day trial through your Amazon account and then cancel it in three more days. Sounds good. Yep. Perfect. Uh, um, so it is ostensibly and now I haven't seen the original. It is ostensibly high noon in space. A lot of people have said that that I believe them. Hmm. And it's all about he's basically the sheriff of a mining col- colony and basically solving a problem against a corrupt uh, you know, mining official. Um, it is not an action fest. It is part drama, part a little bit of uh, procedural sort of uh, mystery, and then the rest is action, and it's very solid. I would never call it like amazing, but very solid. It holds its age very well. They did a good job of knowing when they didn't have money and not trying to make the effects look greater than they needed. Sure. You, at no point do you see something and go, I don't buy that. You're like, okay, that's fine. And it's just a good, fun tale. Uh, the interactions between Sean Connery and the mining official, Peter Boyle, are interesting. Um, it's very 70s movie. It's 1981, but it's a very 70s movie in its, in its pacing, which is, I would not say is slow, 
but very methodical. I, I, the and thing that was most memorable to me were the putting people out an airlock scenes. Is oh, the, yeah, yeah. They they definitely, like, like, okay, they wanted to show they can do these crazy, I wouldn't even say gory. They give you the hint of what happened, never full-on gore. Yeah. Um, well, Captain Okada, he's actually sure is done. He showed her off earlier. Oh, yeah, let me, um, I'll go ahead and uh, put it up on the screen here while we continue to talk, just so you yeah. can take a look at it. But also the interactions between Sean Connery and the Doctor are super fun, too. And his interactions with his sergeant, who didn't really do much else movie-wise, just he played the uh, the Commodore in uh, Star Trek III and Search for Spock a couple years later. The only thing I could see that I'd seen him in. Um, lots, of, lots of interesting things. And, you know, it's a very, very quick and easy Western sort of tale done in space. And I enjoyed the crap out of it. I give it uh, one shot of Kraken. Is a little old. Pacing is a little, like I said, methodical. The action isn't. It's not for action fans, but it is a, just a good, enjoyable movie. Excellent. And his his charisma shows through, even though he's playing a little more sedated. He's not what you expect from later Sean Connery. He's not as uh, bold. Absolutely. Well. So let, let's uh, speaking of older Sean Connery. That's a hell of a seg segue. Yeah. Uh, I uh, went to a, uh, I think, for me, it, it's, so the movie is is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh. And uh, I, I, I'm unsure which of the Indiana Jones trilogy, because there were only three, mo three movies, and anyone that tells you different is a liar and a horrible person. <laughs> um, the, no, uh, I, if it's I, uh, the first one or, or the, the uh, or the last uh, the last crusade, I think that oh, it's the best one. Yeah, I I liked this one probably the most. I, I actually feel like, in order of quality, in my opinion, they go in order of when they of their release. Okay, so you liked the you, you thought you felt like Last Crusade was the worst of the three. Well, yeah, sure, worst of the three and still getting a good grade. Yeah, sure, no, that's fair. That's fair. I've never been a fan <laughs> of Temple of Doom. Temp Temple Doom is a really important formative uh, Indiana Jones moment because he goes from fortune and glory to doing the right thing. It's a really important moment, and it takes that next level of looking to make it stand up, let's say. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I can't get past, past monkey brains. So, fair enough. Um, monkey brains. So the, um, I, I, really, I really super en enjoyed this movie. I think the okay. interplay between... Uh, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, two of the great leading men in Hollywood. We'll go down in history as two of the great so leading good. men of, of Hollywood history. Uh, on the screen at the same time, very enjoyable interactions between them as Indiana Jones and his father. They, uh, it, it's, I'm not sure how you can sell that, that Sean Connery has that accent and Indiana Jones has none. Uh, and oh. still having them be father and son is, is a quite remarkable, even as estranged as Indy might have been. Um, <laughs> but uh, the uh. the action across, you know, the typical Indiana Jones thing, action across continents, uh, the, the scenes in Petra, which was interesting because um, in the, towards the end of the movie, uh, they 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 found where the spoilers, uh, where the uh, the Crusaders oh, have have led them, and. Uh, and I'm, I'm watching them show, and I've, as you guys know, I've been on a fitness journey for about the last 18, 20 months. And on my iFit, one of the kind of the, the when, I, when I want just a, a light walk, they have these cultural ones where you have someone who's like an expert in the area, and you're walking along with them, and they're teaching you the history of the places that they are. That's and awesome. and the, the, one of the series I did was on Jordan. And Petra is in Jordan. And we're walk the the scene in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. There, all you see are like rock walls, and I go, that looks like Petra, because I'd run through it. And sure as shit, they turn the camera around and it's Petra. It's got this <laughs> very very um, iconic uh, carved entrance to where the the whole the the holy city of Petra is, and. Uh, you know, it was, and it's that that for me was an interesting um, touchstone or touch yeah touchstone I guess is the right word, uh, and uh, just super fun and super enjoyable. Uh, it was either gonna, I was either going to watch this movie 
or, or I was going to watch Highlander. And uh, I felt so you like... you were going for the two that I own. I chose to not go for either of the ones I owned. So I, I guess I decided to not watch Highlander only because I wanted it to be... I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to go that direction. So, John, what was your say? I, 100%. I, I, I'd give it one shot of Kraken because you absolutely need to... You know, it's a rollicking adventure, and how bad could it be? Absolutely, and, and I would agree it is the most fun of those movies, hands down. Uh, enjoy it's watching it. I don't want anyone to think that me saying it's the third best of that trilogy means anything other than it's still fucking great. So what was your second uh, yeah. movie then, buddy? Um, well, I watched what I would call possibly my favorite Sean Connery movie and possibly the most quotable Sean Connery movie. Interesting. Uh, that was- Untouchables? God damn right! Yeah, there you go. I almost, I almost watched the Untouchables too, because I love that movie. It's for free on Stars as well. Fantastic. Um, so Untouchables is obviously the story of Elliot Ness and his uh, Untouchables going against uh, Al Capone. Yep. And Sean Connery plays Malone, who's just a beat cop who, uh, you know, who uh, Kevin Costner playing Elliot Ness meets on one night and just sort of goes like, oh, you know, this is a good cop. I can tell. mm Hmm. And gets him to help because the rest of the cops are corrupt. Yep. And I swear, every other line out of Sean Connery's mouth is quotable and just awesome. He is leaning into it so perfectly. He knows exactly what this movie needs. It needs attitude and those quotes. And he just brings it in every scene. Like, Kevin Costner's a solid actor. He wasn't there yet in this movie. And he disappears in scenes with Sean Connery. Well, yeah. You're like, I kind of forget that Kevin Costner's there. Well, I mean, Andy Garcia and Wallace Shawn have other have roles in the movie, too. I think it's Wallace Shawn playing the, third, the fourth member of their group. And they're all more distinct than Kevin Costner. I don't feel like the director. I don't feel like, um, oh, what's his name? Jesus Christ. Brian De Palma gives Kevin Costner enough to do. I think they want him to be as easy of a character as possible so people know exactly where he stands immediately. I suppose, yeah, just so that there's no moral amb- ambiguity going on. Yeah, there's no probably. He, he is supposed to be the good guy, and part of it is supposed to be his journey. Um, a funny note about this movie is I can tell where I think Studio Influence forced the Palma to add a scene. Because after uh, Costner chases Nitty in the, in the courtroom at the end of the movie, there's a scene where he, he takes him and he's captured him, and Nitty's saying, like, your friend died like a stuck pig. And then Kim Costner throws him off the roof. And then he comes down, and Andy Garcia walks up and says, you know, where's uh, Nitty? He's like, he's in the car. And I think he's supposed to come down alone. You're supposed to be like, what happened? I think there wasn't supposed to be the scene of him throwing off the roof. Okay, I think so... it was supposed to cut to him walking down, and then that, then you get to him going that, and then you get this dramatic pan into him in the car, obviously throwing off the roof. Got it. Or I think maybe he wanted to make it ambiguous whether he was running away and, or Kevin Costner shoved him. I think that would have been a better moment for the end. Sure. And if anything, it is my only problem with this movie. The rest of this movie is just fucking top-notch. Robert De Niro's on his A game. He doesn't have a lot of scenes, but he just eats, but chews the scenery every time he's there. Uh, God damn it, what can I say? Fucking zero shots of crack, and that movie is great. Yep. Just write down everything Sean Connery says. He's got great lines for the whole thing. Uh, Andy Garcia doesn't have a ton to do, but he does a good job as well. And that, it, it's really sad that some of the best scenes in that movie, the, or the best scene in that movie, takes place after Sean Connery's character is, is killed. That train station scene, I know they took it from Battleship Potemkin, but man, what, what De Palma did with that is just fucking excellent. Suspense and just tension that is a great great scene excellent movie fantastic i've i've watched it maybe a couple of times it's been a long long time since i've watched it i completely agree uh, it's funny i remember that being one of those movies I'm like oh that's one of my movies my sister recorded that's not a me movie that's you know whatever it's and then i finally saw it I'm like what the fuck this is great this is such a me movie that was some drama bullshit no way dude that was that's a movie I should own on Blu-ray. I don't know why I don't. So, um, I also watched two other movies while oh, we were shit. out and about. Uh, we, so, on Halloween, we have a long-standing tradition in this house 
to turn off all the lights, close all the windows, go downstairs, and wait out the the socialized candy gathering going on. Mm-hmm. And especially in uh, COVID-ravaged Wisconsin, seemed like Halloween was a terrible idea they, that they allowed to happen. Agreed. Um So we watched 28 Days Later. Oh, shit. 28 Days Later, for those of you who aren't aware, is the invention of fast zombies. And uh, fast zombies are terrifying. So what ends up happening is, for those of you who aren't familiar with the plot, spoilers ahead, this movie's older than dirt, so you've been warned. Um, A group of eco-terrorists break into a research lab doing naughty things to monkeys. And they have been doing the scientists... Uh, were tre- treating the monkeys with a chemical called rage. And the rage uh, it was like a virus. And it would cause the monkeys to act out hyper violently and go berserk and just try to kill anything they see. But they were inhibited so long as they were given things to kind of try and keep it back. The echo terrorists come out, think they're going to do God's work by letting the monkeys out, and they some rarely get killed by the monkeys, and rage is released. And Rage is hyper, hyper uh, contagious. And you see one of the characters wake up in the hospital and all hell is broken loose. Basically, nobody's around. Everybody's dead. And the, zo- the, the zombies are these victims of rage uh, transmitted through blood and, or any kind of bodily fluid. And it, almost any amount will get you. Uh, and... Uh, so it is a, you know, much like Zombieland is kind of a tongue-in-cheek sort of buddy movie on the road, this becomes a less tongue-in-cheek buddy movie uh, as the protagonist... Go ahead. It's sort of the opposite. They're yeah. two sides of the coin. Yep. It's like, it's like the, it's, if, if Zombieland was sort of the bright white side, this is the dark black side. Of, yes. And they are following a radio signal trying to find a, uh, what is allegedly being broadcast as a sanctuary, which turns out to be none of the above, none of that. Uh, right. Turns out to be a, a, a few surviving British military officers led by Chris Eccleston. Oh, um, shit. The first rebooted Doctor Who. And uh, does a fantastic job with his band of total miscreants who want to do nothing more than do the rape on any female that they find, doesn't matter how old they are. And uh, the father of the of the young girl gets infected and has to and has to be put down. And um, one thing leads to another, and uh, it it's uh, it it follows the the adventures of the, how they go about dealing with this particular um, this particular set of zombies. And uh, I really highly recommend it. I think it is probably one of the best done zombie movies out there. It, it is. I would, I would call it zombie related. I'm I'm a big fan that zombies mean slow. If you think else, it's a good zombie zombie tangential movie, zombie adjacent movie. For, fair enough. It does take it does take that aspect of zombies and say, well, what if they weren't slow? What if they were well, relentless and fast? From from a standpoint of movie making, I feel like that changes the threat of them. Because mm-hmm. the whole idea of a zombie is there's a horde of them. There's so many of them, you can never kill them all, but you can outrun them and whatever. This takes it and makes it a, you know, a multi-level threat. Fair enough. Almost too much of a threat for the average person. It's, a, it's almost too much of a threat for any human being. Indeed. It is, it, but it asks the question... It asks a couple questions. It, it asks the question: If you take zombies, and you cha- and you just re- flip that one aspect, where, what do they become? And and you see that, okay? They, they're I'll little Mary Sue. Let's say, let's say you take zombies and you flip the other aspect of being mindless to super cunning. That'd be interesting too. It, it would be. It would be very. It'd be very super cunning. That'd be interesting. Some of that was explored in the. Uh, the podcast were alive, uh, and uh, that's a that's a hell of a podcast to listen to. It's all, it's not available as a free podcast anymore because it got picked up by Amazon and it's now an Audible. Okay. Um. So. 
it's a uh, it's a probably one of the best produced podcasts slash uh, audible dramas I've ever listened to. It's fantastic. The uh, the other thing that um, you know, I think that it, it really does is it asks the question about um, what 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 is going to happen when faced with annihilation. What does what do humans become? And, humans won't become, yeah. And and really, you you almost start rooting for the you not almost you do end up rooting for the zombies in this movie. You're rooting against the people, like fucking kill that guy. Yeah, this that the military guys in general, you just want them all dead, and. Yeah. For good reasons. It's why I never got into um, The Walking Dead. I always joke and say, you can only have one humans fucking each other over during the apocalypse, you know, thing to watch. And I watched Battlestar Galactica. That's my one. Yeah, I you know, I, I made it through half of great one episode. Stories because you have to go, like, look at humans fucking each other over, even though it's the apocalypse when we should all be banding together. We're still fucking each other over. Yeah, I had to have a... I mean, that... There was a point in Game of Thrones when I there was a there was when um, Tyrion was about to get basically um, was up up for trial trial and was clearly going to be um, executed. And I I told I looked Belinda right square in the face and I said, and the episode ended. And I said, so you've seen this part before because I was I was catching up. I said. If Tyrion dies right now, this this series is over for me. So why don't you just save me the trouble and tell me whether or not Tyrion gets out of this? Because I'm not going to waste another ounce of my life because he's literally the only... I have to have someone in a show that I can root for. I have Absolutely. to have at least have one. To. There's got to be that one person who is... Ostensibly If not good. the epitome of good, but at least good enough being the best person he can in the circumstances. Just ostensibly good, and you can make a strong argument that Tyrion is the hero, is the only truly see, good, uh, until season he, seven. Until, did you see Battlestar Galactica? Um, yes, and I got as far as um, Cylons being raped uh, in That's prison, nice. and that was the end for me. Fair. I can't argue with that at all. Because then you know that Hilo is the one good guy in that series ostensibly through the whole thing. Okay. Never compromises his morals, but yeah, that's a tough part to get through. I I, I went, whoop, this is not entertainment. No, not me. But those are the toughest episodes to get. It gets a lot better after, but yeah, those episodes are really tough. But back to the photo. What do you give 28 Days Later as a rating? Um, I'm going to give it a shot of crack, and just because you should have a shot of crack when you watch a zombie movie. And I uh, really, really enjoyed it, though. Um, hell of a good movie. I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, I've given some of it away, but you know it's still a hell of a great ride. Yeah, it's not like you can't guess. I mean, it's it's almost uh, uh, a uh, staple of the zombie genre at this point. It's it old really is. Uh, Twenty eight weeks later, not as good. Just gonna put it out there. Anyway, a lot of a lot of sequels aren't. It's a rare sequel mm -hmm. that's as good. Uh, I do need to mention something. Talcher says he hated the first Rupert Doctor and uh, Man Talcher. I'm sorry. I love Chris Eccleston. I don't feel like he got enough time, and I feel like that was his choice and I have the time. It was. He didn't have time to sign. I liked when I saw him. He was very different than the earlier Doctors, being an old-school Doctor Who fan. That being said, yes, I love David Tennant. Who doesn't love David Tennant? He, uh, so Eccleson was saddled with Rose Tyler at her worst. Yes. She was a terrible companion in that, in that series. Um, even with David Tennant, while she got smarter, and towards the end when she was on the show almost not at all, she was much better. Yes. I hate to say it, Rose is probably my least favorite of the modern companions. Oh, yeah, there's, without question, she's the worst of the modern companions. I mean, I like Mickey Smith better, love Captain Jack Harkness. That's the best thing about uh, uh, the Rupert Doctors. You Correct, get to introduce Captain Jack Harkness. Yeah. Um, my favorite was, um, what's her face? Karen Gillian. Oh, Amy Pond? Amy Pond. Well, question. Smart. Um, she was strong. She grew. She was... Her and Roy, super good. They, Fantastic. Like, I like Matt Smith a lot. Yeah. Like, the thing, I, I haven't seen too much. I haven't seen much other than clips of Capaldi, but... 
those first three, I liked them all for different reasons. I, they did a great job of doing what Doctor is about, each one being different. Mm -hmm. Yep. So anyway, uh, so that anyway. that was. So then uh, the other thing that I watched was a thing called Alien vs. Predator. Oh. So. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I see. Alien vs. Predator is a bad movie. <laughs> this just did. It. It's a hot take. It, it is a bad movie that is an awful lot of fun to watch. I, it can be. It is. It, can. it is. It is what absolutely happens when you have run completely out of ideas. Th that movie came in without any ideas and said, you know what would happen? Let's ask the question. What if we did Alien, but we did it on Earth, and we added Predators? That's all so it is. It's a haunted what house. What happened if someone was reading old Dark Horse comics and going, you know, they made this whole universe where Aliens and Predators were the same, you know, in the same universe, because the aliens were designed to be the ultimate you know, prey. Yeah. Challenging and tough and, and, and all. You can't let them. That's a great idea. They took this bearish core and did a shit job putting it on the screen. Yeah, it's it's just, it's it's like, okay, let's watch don't. the meat bags get murdered. Don't, don't watch it. There's so many better, more fun movies to watch than this. You know, it's one of those things like, where we put it out to the kids. It said, what do you want to watch? And Alien vs. Predators came up. And it's fine. Whatever. Aliens, Predators. It's been a long time. I remember it being bad. Whatever. And, <laughs> and I have HBO Max. It was free. So yep. the price was right. The and, price was right. And, um, you know, for it's a popcorn. It's a beer and popcorn movie. Um, it is... A little more in the beer than popcorn. It is irretrievably formulaic lance henriksen can't bring this movie up no 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 and because he adds a lot to so many bad movies he just cannot he can't save this it's so first off just for if you if you decide to put yourself through this movie oh. remember that it is not canon it attempts to be canon but it's, it's not. not canon it should be shot out of a canon it should be it would, it would do better yeah it'd be more entertaining shot out of a canon. how about this start with any other Predator movie, Predator, Predator 2, Predators, I don't know about the new one, The Predator, I haven't seen it yet, I've heard bad stuff. Predator 2 we'll is watch so... Alien. No, man, Predator 2 is underrated. It I is not... am going to take a hot take here and disagree with my co-host on this one. That movie is so bad. Now... Of the three Predator movies I named there, it is easily the worst of the three. Fair. Predator and Predators are so much better. But it is... If if Alien vs. Predator is the bad movie that is kind of fun to watch, this is the bad movie that's actually super fun to watch. Okay, well, they, we're going to be in a different spot on this one, buddy. And that's okay. Fine. And that's okay. We value differences. Yeah. And, um, but I, um, Danny Glover, watching Danny Glover do the cop, I'm too old for this shit thing for ostensibly 90 to 120 minutes was just not working. And, and the cringeworthy, uh, performance put in by Bill Paxson. Bill Paxson was amusing. <sighs> Gary Busey was another thing entirely. Gary Busey was full Busey. He yeah, yeah. It, it's a fun time to watch. I'm not saying it's great. It's it's better than Alien vs. Predator, I would say, by a reasonable stretch. Well, you remember the characters out of Alien Predator 2 more than you remember the bags of meat that get slaughtered. I'll Fair. say that. Fair. I, I would not put Predator 2 above, say, an average action movie. You know what? I'll bet you if, if Predator 2 had been made in modern times... So that it didn't suffer from a whole lot of nineties. True. I bet it would be easier to watch. But yeah. it's so nineties. Fuck, it's so nineties. You know, I've got that on my iTunes. I'm gonna have to watch that soon. All right. Well, I wish you luck. Um, Alien vs. Predator. I don't think we've gotten a rating yet. Oh, Alien vs. <laughs> Predator. It's 
three solid shots of Kraken, maybe four. Um, I drank a lot um, and didn't regret it. It's funny. That's the rating I would have given Predator 2 also. Hmm. Three shots, solid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I feel like, like, um, Turkish Star Wars is now closing in on breaking through and not being a four, not almost not being a four shots of Kraken, where it's almost like three and a half. It's getting better with age. I don't know. I, I don't think it'll ever break four shots of Kraken. I, I, I've lowered it down. It's four and a half, but it's okay. definitely not a five anymore. There's too much no. shit. It's a, if you want five shots of Kraken, it's a loving five shots of Kraken. In, in a world that Atlantic Rim exists in, Oh, you've been made the worst movie. It's not even cats. No, it no, cats. no. I haven't seen I, cats yet, nor will don't, I. Don't. No, I. You, 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 that's why. That's why. I mean, I forget about cats because I know you've warned me about it, but I'm not. I'm gonna actually heed your warning this time. Because you did with Atlantic Grim. That was the funniest part. I know. But, oh. but think about the. We wouldn't have nearly the Atlantic Rim references that we have. Oh no, no. We that that movie is. It, God, that it's so bad. It almost. If you have to see it, watch the MST3K of it. If you're going to watch a shit, yeah. shit movie, watch the MST3K rip the shreds. Yeah, that's it. Uh, by the, the way, final folks, movie, movie. That's yeah, the, that's the new one with Jonah that is in it, which is MST3K is kind of dead to me right now because of how the split has happened. It's weird. It's just it's just not as funny as it was in the past. No. It, it, it's a product of its time. I don't think you can go back. You know, they say you can never go back, and they're really true. You can't. You got to forge ahead. You got to you got to switch it up a little bit. Um, yeah. Tucker, I mentioned the final mummy movie. I assume he means one with Tom Cruise. I'm waiting to find that for free. I have not watched it because it's not related to the mummy. Because the Brandon Fraser mummy movies, two I find one is great. Yeah, those are fun the second movies. Second one is very enjoyable. The third one's fun but not great. Yeah, those are fun movies. Yeah. Oh, the old series. Okay, so you mean Tomb of the Dragon Emperor? It was fun great no not as good as either of the two before it was obviously on its last legs but it was enjoyable so cool i think we did a show john we did a show show yeah, and uh, help out. Yeah, let's, let's, a little let's, drink left, which is good because that was slightly aggressive that's fine so let's get Absolutely. the music going here there we go there's oh, there's the dulcet tones we have uh, staved uh, off the existential dread of existence so folks um by this time I'm thinking by this time, well, at least not, uh, not next week, but the week after, we should have had a at least a call as to who we think the president is going to be. Then it'll be in the courts as Trump releases a million and one lawyers upon the universe, um, and we'll see how all that goes. Yeah, he was able to uh, successfully cuckify the Supreme Court just before he got in there and then and now Yertle the Turtle is going to be the, the god dang head of the Senate again but anyway, anyway. so um, the universe hasn't burned down yet pretty psyched about that no one died on election day at a poll place so that's okay yeah pretty good maybe there was shooting in Baltimore but that was unrelated yeah, I feel like I feel like that's a it's a win um, so it's absolutely a win so uh, folks, we have a pretty major announcement coming down the pipe uh, around what's going to be streamed on here. Just get over there to the Painting with Menoth John Facebook page and uh, start looking at the at the pictures that are going to be posted over the next week. And you'll start to get a fever for the flavor of what's coming down the pipe. Um, I'm, of course, Menoth John. I'm the only one there is. That's all you got. And, of course... Up in the catbird seat, you know him, you love him. The mighty right hand of the podcast, Mr. John Spencer. We're going to be back here in two weeks, whether you like it or not. Don't give a shit how many people tune in. We'll be here. If it's one person, that's still one person that's not looking at Markiplier right at that moment. On behalf of... And and if you're watching Markiplier, good for you. He seems like a solid citizen. Um, Anyway, on behalf of Mr. John Spencer, I'm Menoth John. We'll see you back here on Painting with Menoth John. Good night, everybody. Good night. Cat That's where I It's was. only Wednesday. How's yeah. only Wednesday? Friday's coming.
Need Friday. Friday's payday, man. Can't argue with that. He'd let me drink at work. That'd make things better. Yeah. I asked my boss about that, and he's told me, what I don't see can't hurt you. Oh, shit. Good night, everybody.